y'all and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome I'm Nicole with the Bushel Unpacked Designs. Today I'm working with this 12 by 12 vinyl sheet from AB Designs Co. I've had it for a while and I've been dying to use it so I'm just applying it here to a silhouette cutting mat and I don't know if you can tell here, but I learned this trick from Trina over at Diamonds and Dust. If you're going to be cutting out a template, then when you lay the vinyl down on your cutting mat, cover it with a sheet of transfer paper because then when you apply it to your tumbler and you pull up portions to glitter and paint, then the portions that you don't want covered in paint and glitter are protected. Such a amazing tip. So I don't know what happened. I think when I hit record it was already recording so it stopped recording for me to apply this cut sheet to my tumbler but I just applied it like the normal hinge method. I'm sure you've seen me do it before. The only difference was this has a template cut out of it. So I applied that and then I used my Cami Page Boutique edge trimmer and I trimmed on the very bottom setting for the very top lid. I just wanted to make sure that I had it completely straight and it left a little bit of exposed stainless so that it can get a good coat and seal with epoxy on the top rim. So once I have that, I am going to, I'm going to show you what colors I'm going to use. I'm going to do two color blends on the different V's. So one V is going to have 24K Magic and Adventure, all from Diamonds and Dust. And then the blue section is going to have Winter Solstice and Frost. I thought those went really well together and all of them matched. And then we're going to use this foil from Artistic Painting Studio for the center section. I took my Sharpie and I just marked off what I wanted where just to make sure that I had a visual in my mind and I'm going to pull off this first section and here see this is where that tip came in everything else is still covered so when I am going to paint this for the glitter then it will not get paint well it will get paint on the edges but you'll see in a little while when I peel it it's the most satisfying thing when you peel up that transfer tape that's over the other part of the vinyl you get the crisp clean lines it's it's my favorite part so I'm just going to paint it blue because we're going to do the blue section first it is a kind of light colored paint well not really light colored but it's very like a translucent -y looking paint so I did give it two coats and then on the second coat I did mix in a little bit of glitter glue and then I'm going to let that the first let the co first coat dry apply, apply the second coat with the glitter glue and then we are going to give it a good ombre Once all that glitter was applied, we are going to move into what I said was my favorite step, and I'm going to peel off all of that transfer tape that is over the exposed vinyl, and here you go, look at those crisp, clean lines. Every time it works 
so well. It gives you these amazing, clear, crisp lines that I just don't get when I use painter's tape. So after that, I'm going to use some foil glue from Artistic Painting Studio. And in hindsight, I probably should have waited to peel up the transfer tape on this section of vinyl just to make sure when I applied the glue, I didn't get anything on the vinyl, but it's okay, we live and learn, right? And I just went very carefully in with a small paintbrush and I'm going to apply that foil glue all over the remaining exposed stainless and then that is where we are going to apply our foil. The foil is like an orangey, coppery color, but I thought that it went really well with this vinyl and with these colors and to just give it a little bit extra of something. I created this template just out of an idea I had and I really like the way it came out. It's, I just kind of threw it together in my Silhouette Studio software and it worked out really well to complete this vision I had. So I'm going to uh, finish applying all of that foil glue and the very center where the V's cross, there's a diamond in there and that is also going to have the foil glue. I think I did forget to mention that this is a 20 ounce straight tumbler from the tumbler supply store. And once I had all of that foil glue applied, I'm going to use my heat gun to just help speed up the process of the drying. And you'll know that it is dry and ready to apply the foil when it turns from a white color or a cloudy color to clear. I'm just taking a small paintbrush and right around those edges where the glitter is, I am using the bottom edge of the paintbrush to just kind of help get in at that crease right there. And then I'm using the brush part of the paintbrush to just help me work in that foil to make sure it lays down all nice and flat. And it gave me really good coverage. And then one last thing before I peel it, I just took my squeegee on the felt end and gave it a good rub and then also on the other edge I really wanted to make sure it was really laid down on those edges by the glitter and then I went and made sure that I didn't have any open spots where the foil didn't stick to the glue sometimes I'll get a if I missed a spot or if I didn't rub really well you'll get a little bit of a opening area and then I just did the same thing to the very bottom and the bottom rim. The bottom I don't think I applied very much glue so I will go in and apply another coat of glue and then repeat the process on the bottom. After I applied that second coat of glue and repeated the foiling process I Took it outside and gave it two really good coats of Rust-Oleum's Clear Glossy Spray Paint because I didn't want any of that glitter to be merging into another color. And then I gave it two light coats of epoxy. And then once that was cured, I did give it a little bit of a sand and then we are going to apply some vinyl striping. And you're going to notice here that I'm applying some white stripes, but in the final picture, that is not what it looked like because I put it on and then I put on the blue section and the orange section, I did 
in the centers of the whites, I did orange and blue vinyl, and I didn't like it. I, I don't know, I think it was the white that was really throwing me off because it seemed like such a bright, stark contrast from all of the other colors that are just on the tumbler. I was thinking it would bring out the white from the vinyl, but I just didn't love it. So it's okay if you don't love it to just peel it off and start again and change your mind. We all know that I've shared several times how I get in the middle of something and it just isn't coming to life or I just hate the way it looks or I just change my mind and we start over. So that's okay. You're okay to change your mind. So I'll show you a little bit here of me just laying down the striping and then I'm just going to peel it all off and then I decided to just go in with the orange vinyl. The blue that I had, it was a little bit brighter. So I didn't really like the way it looked either. It wasn't like a dark navy color that went really well with this. It was more of a brighter blue. So I just went in with the orange glitter vinyl that I got from Hobby Lobby. It's one of their shimmer vinyls and as much as I love it, it's you can't stretch it because it will break or rip. And I never ever seem to have the extra strong tacky transfer tape on hand, which my regular transfer tape does not pick up that vinyl. So I, I use it for striping a lot because I just you do that by hand, but you'll see when I put on the word decal, I basically have to hand place every single letter, but it's okay. It was worth it because I like the way it turned out. But again, here I am applying those stripes and then we are going to just get rid of them. I just wanted to leave a portion of this in, even though we did peel it up, just so you could see how I did some of the striping and where I overlapped it and then how I trimmed it off and all of that. So here I am going in with a much thinner striping on that orange glitter vinyl. I think also on my white sections when I did that, I think it was too thick that it was really taken away from some of the design because your eye was going right to those white lines. So I liked this much better. It's much more subtle, but it still gives that outline look, but lets those double V's really speak for themselves. I didn't want to cover up or take away from all of that pretty glitter and the glitter blend, so I really end up ended up liking this so much more. Because this striping, I really liked the way it looked and it was very subtle and didn't take away from the design, I did want to add something just a little extra to add and enhance that look without taking away from the design, like I said. So for each original stripe that I laid down, I laid down another stripe to the left and to the right side of it. So essentially each section that got a striping line will have three like a group of three striped lines. 
I hope that makes sense. After I applied all of that striping and trimmed it all off, I did give it two thin coats of epoxy. And then next I'm going to show you how I turned my own handwriting into the SVG that we used on this tumbler. I know there's a lot going on in this tutorial, but I really wanted to show you how my thought process works with adding the striping, not liking it, pulling it off, and then how I decided to add this SVG since I couldn't find one that I liked. So my next option was to just create it myself. And I wanted something that was different and unique. So that's why I thought using my own handwriting would put a very unique look on it versus just using some fonts that I had on my computer. So I knew that I wanted it to say, grow through what you go through. So I just took a notebook piece of paper and I put it over this file folder that I had so it would help me with the lines because to save my life, I can't write straight. So it just helped me like make sure I had it nice and lined up. And I'm just going to write the words until I'm really happy with the way that word came out. So you'll just see me like scratch on the word through a few times. And I'm using this Sharpie or not the Sharpie, this highlighter because I liked the thickness and the thinness of the each side of it. So I could really get those different looks that I wanted for the different words. And I know that there is other ways to go about doing this. You can use Procreate or other systems like that, but I'm still learning on Procreate. I'm not very good at it yet, so I'm not good. I'm good with design elements, but not so much with fonts and stuff yet. So this is how I always used to do it when I've done things like this. So we're taking it back old school, I guess you can say. But basically, once I was happy with all of the wording, I just put a dot by the ones that I really liked. And then I'm going to scan it into my computer and then bring up that scanned sheet in my Silhouette Studio software. And then we're going to trace each word that I like. So let me show you here. After I scanned it and brought it up in the Silhouette Studio software, we are going to select the trace area and we're going to select the space that you want to trace. And then I'm going to move that threshold until it is completely covered. No little dots in there, but not all the way covered. Just keep clicking it on the little arrow or moving that slide bar. And then once you're happy with that, I just moved that word out of the way and continued until I had all of the words. The word through, I'm going to just trace once and then I will just copy and paste it to use it since the word is used twice. And then here you'll see I'm just ungrouping the what you and then grouping each word back together so that I can just kind of play with the configuration and come up with something that I like and want to apply to the back of that tumbler.
once I was happy with the configuration, I did create an offset and I cut that out of a white glittery vinyl. It's really pretty. And then the top layer is going to be that same orange vinyl we used in the striping, the one that I mentioned never sticks to my transfer tape. So I basically had to hand place every single letter individually, but that's okay. We made it work. I really love this vinyl. It's such, it has such a pretty glitter look to it. So I'm sure there's others out there, but this one's always just convenient for me. See here, I went to lift it up and I ripped it. So it's a very thin, thin vinyl. It's very delicate. So after I had all of that placed, I was able to get a little bit of one of the words to stick, but it wouldn't come off the transfer tape. So it just helped me move it basically from the carrier sheet to the tumbler. And then I adjusted each letter individually to make sure they were in the right places. And then after that, I gave this tumbler two final coats of epoxy and this beauty was all done. This one is available on my website if you want to snag it. I love this one. I would love to keep it too, but y'all know I've got so many that are my favorites because every single one that I make just becomes my new favorite. So I really think I have a problem, but I need to get rid of some of these. So if you want to snag this beauty and help my shelf get cleared, then it will be listed on my website. In the description box, I will also leave a link to all of the, the places you can find me and all of the products that I used and also a link to join my mentorship group if you would be interested in that. We are a small group. We're slowly growing, but we have a lot of fun over there. I go live a few times a month, which I'm thinking of changing it and going live once a month or once a week now instead of every other week. Um, we're working on a fun tumbler. I've got challenges that I do each month and you win a prize and I do a supply giveaway each month. So even though we're slow, we're, even though we are a small group, we are slowly growing and I would love to have you if you feel like it is something that you would benefit from. So that is it for today. And as always, I am so thankful for each and every one of you. And I so, so appreciate all of the love and support. And I will see y'all. Oh, I completely forgot. Hold on. Before I end this, I did want to add a little bit of white on this end to like bring it all together. So just on the center of each V, I did add a white stripe. So that way it carried over the white from the offset in the SVG. I completely forgot about this. So my brain was all over the place in this tumbler. I'm telling you, I, I really wanted to share how my brain processes making tumblers sometimes because sometimes I go in with a complete game plan and I know exactly what I'm going to do and sometimes not so much. I don't know what I'm going to do and it's just kind of trial and error just like applying the first white stripes and hating them and then peeling them off. So then moving to creating my own SVG because I didn't like one that I saw anywhere else. So my brain really just the way it picks things up to be inspired or the way I implement them onto a tumbler, it's not always the same. And I just, I know sometimes I ramble in my tutorials as well, but I really try to give you guys a, oh, see, here is another thing. I decided to add a little bit of waterfalls from Diamonds and Dust on that final layer. Well, on the final two layers on the first one, I just sprinkled a little bit of the waterfalls just to give it a little bit more something because that waterfalls glitter really picks up any color with whatever you have going on. So 
Anyways, as I was saying, I know that I ramble a lot, but that's really just sometimes how my brain processes making tumblers. So it's just me and I hope that I don't ramble on too much and turn you guys off. But anyways, I will be back next week with another tutorial and I will see y'all then. Have a great week, y'all. Bye.